I want to talk about something that is very important now that that's going on. Um, a lot of issues on, especially two year campuses, have been dealing with race. Uh, one of the issues that always comes up is just the culture uh, of the colleges that, that set that forth uh, for it. I know if you've been working hard, you uh, with Cheryl Nunez's position coming in um, and really making sure that you touch those issues with it. Well, first, I think leadership at colleges and universities need to upfront uh, admit that there is a problem. Mm. Uh, I think uh, mm. too often they'll do a survey and say, oh, well, we don't really have a problem. And uh, you know, Olympic College has made a lot of progress and, and it's a high priority to make more, but we, we do have problems and, and issues we need to work on and identifying those and being proactive and being out in front. And uh, hiring Cheryl Nunez is not a panacea and everything's gonna be okay because okay, we, we can check bye. the box off, you hired somebody. But what I really was impressed about Cheryl is she, uh, when she was at Xavier University in Cincinnati where she was most recently from, she she's, looks at diversity holistically, that it's not a department off to the side, it's, it's uh, uh, not a, a few courses or a, a hiring strategy, it's integrated into the fabric of the institution. So it's a major part of d diversity and, and inclusion equity is used to, uh, as leverage for the institution to meet its uh, learning goals right. and, and, and uh, achievement for all students in, in the context of equity that the students achieve at the same rate, uh, the access is, is, is equal and it's a part of what the institution is. And, and too many times institutions have departments off to the side. And, right. and that's, why, that's why Cheryl, as Vice President for Equity and Inclusion, she has a human resources department and the communications department. And I don't know of another position in the country that I'm aware of that has that. Right. So communications, because that's the look of the college, and um, it, it's, it's just, uh, critical and in, uh, in HR that gets to the issue of diversifying your workforce Work. and developing right. a strategic plan uh, to do that and we have a ways to go there the state we're right about where the state is on average it which isn't good right and, the, and and we need to be more creative and innovative because we haven't moved the needle as a state at all in that area of having a diverse uh, workforce in higher ed and I think I, I think too that I'm glad that you you said that overall as a state because I think so much, uh, uh, and you know, conversations that I've tried to have just to really understand is so much is put onto the university to do, and, you know, and the schools to do to say, oh, well, they're your students, you do it. But then you realize that there are certain things that, you know, the state overall needs to to, to take. And I, I I just wanted to say, watching because I didn't understand Cheryl's position, you know, until uh, I really got to sit down and speak with her, and she went over it, and I said, wow, this is. This is powerful because it really not only does it send a statement, but it lets. And I've heard students say it now, you know, the more and more that, but it lets the students know that okay, some something is being done for me to go to, and it's not just about race with with her position that I like too. It's about what's going on with female students, what's going on yeah. with transgender students, and dealing with that, like you say, woving in the fabric uh, of it. So I, I, I applaud you for that because a lot of presidents have not taken that, that step. And like you said, hiding it is one of the biggest issues. They wait till an issue come up and then they realize we, we have to deal with it. It says I have an open question here for you. So <laughs> what in the world happened to the Seahawks <laughs> first half of the game on Sunday? Uh, I saw my, I, I, and don't no, go hold this to me. No, <laughs> Actually, what I'd like to ask is uh, what advice would you give me as the president to... Uh, if there's one or two things you'd ask me to do to, that you think would uh, make a better climate, a learning environment for students at Olympic College? I, I think the, the one thing, and this is why I, I really wanted to do this uh, interview, the fir first time I ever met you <laughs> was you was in the cafeteria. And I like, because I, you know, I'm about uh, people who run things, and that's, that's what I, I look for. So I always saw your picture there, but you were sitting in the, in the cafeteria just eating. But no one would come up to you. So I came up to you and I said, I said hey, I went, he said, sit down, sit down. And I, I sat down real quick. And as I said, well, I don't want to bother you. I said, aren't you the president of the school? <laughs> you said, yes, Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> and it just, it really played on me because it made me understand that you were seeking out to, to, to really see 
certain things. Uh, there was something I learned from from, from Puffy. I, like, right, yeah, I put you with Donald Trump in one <laughs> breath, and now I'm putting you with Puffy in another breath. <laughs> but Puffy always used to say, sometimes just sit in the club and watch. And what that showed me, and a lot of people don't know, you know, you you'll walk around the whole the whole school, and I watched you, and I was like, wow, he really is like just there. And I think more or less, it's you absorbing and listening. And sometimes, even now that you know, I get to spend a little bit of time with you on the mentoring side, you know the heartbeat of the school, you know what's going on. And the only thing that I, I say is keep that, that ear open from, from everybody because, you know, I, I, and you've seen it, I have students now that come into the office constantly and I'll give them the time that I, that I have to really sit down. And I, I, you know, I never realized how important listening was. Until, until you know, I really got this position to, to know that people just want to be heard. And whether you can solve the problem or not, it's the fact that you're listening to them that's there. And I think that you're already doing that. You're on, you're on that path. Um, and like I said, with, with having Cheryl's uh, position there, uh, bringing people like Dr. Bell uh, in, in as a vice president, those, those, those type of things, especially for me as a, as a black man, it, it plays because it shows that, okay, this is some place that may be growing. We may not have it now, but he's making those steps there uh, for it. But I, I, I think that you, from what I've seen, the direction that you're going is, is right. Because coming, Br Bremerton, and I'll say it out, you know, it's just me saying it, Bremerton is very different. <laughs> this is a very, very different place. And I think that you have been, you've been, been able to move the college in a way that allows the community to watch. And me being out in the community and talking, people are taking notice to that. And you're starting to see that in other areas where you know, people in Silverdale are saying, you know what, oh, we may, may want to think about that. The school is doing it. And I, and I think that, that that's a key. But keeping that open air, but also at the same time, like uh, I, I keep saying to all of ASOC uh, and our student leadership, let's have these conversations. No matter how <laughs> difficult they, they are, no matter how you know, uncomfortable they, they make you feel, having those conversations, I think, leads to the part of making sure things get done. And that's, that's what I've, I've been seeing uh, with you with it. So, real quick, because I know you have a lot to do, and so do I. I got speed questions, all right? This, my, my, my son, Denadre, was like, you know, going over this, so what are you doing? And I said, oh, doing questions. He said, do you have speed questions? And I was like, what are speed questions? <laughs> so, we're gonna, one, two, three, Four speed questions, right, that we're going to go by. And then you answer and I answer. Favorite food? Pizza. Serious? <laughs> <laughs> no wonder we have pizza in there. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Ah, that, that's a threat. Uh, West Indian food is my favorite food. Uh, curry goat. I'm a curry goat fanatic. I love curry goat. <laughs> favorite TV show? Uh, NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Are you serious? <laughs> they wouldn't have thought that. This is going to bug you out. So I... I am a George Burns fanatic. I've loved George Burns uh, since the beginning. So I, with him, it's his show with his wife. Uh, I can't come to my head right now, but he had a show with his wife, George yeah. Burns and his wife, and his wife was just beautiful because she was just wacky and everything. But it was, uh, the, I can't remember what the show was called right off the top right now, but it was just the George Burns show with his wife. I still watch it now that they do these reruns. Gra Gracie was her name. Yeah, right, right. Gra Gra Gracie and, um, right, that's, that's what it was, Gracie. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, the show was just funny. <laughs> Favorite board game? I hate board games. Are you serious? <laughs> You're serious? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought that. <laughs> I really thought. Don't tell me that you play Electronic. If you tell me that you play with PS2, I'm going to leave right now. <laughs> Uh, so what's your favorite uh, game to play? I was serious. <laughs> serious? I don't play board games. I get too emotional and I'm too competitive. Until <laughs> you tear the checker game into oh, Monopoly is the worst of all. Oh, that I agree. I won't, I won't do Monopoly anymore. I've, I've learned my lesson in my household. It almost broke apart my children and I <laughs> relationship. <laughs> Especially when they started teaming up on me and buying everything from me. I, I can agree with you on that. I, I don't, I, Suck, Suck My Battleship is my favorite one. I, I, I love it, I, I, I can't lie, I love it. So, two choices, white water rafting or mountain climbing? Mountain climbing. Yeah? Yeah, same here. I can't stand the cold water. <laughs> I, 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 I love it. Um, I thank you for take, taking this time out because it, it's something that I think people need to, to, to see and I learned some, some things even though I talk to you all the time, but the, knowing the, the learning thing about your father was, is critical because a lot of people 
don't understand these are the things that the fabric that makes us and the more that we understand each other you know the more that it grows so I, I thank you I thank Shauna for scheduling this which was, this was supposed to have been last year <laughs> but I, I, I thank you you know for, uh, for her for Shauna Bliss really working it out to have you here today and you know just enjoy that that time hopefully next time we'll have some food here from a nice cafeteria <laughs> anybody that you want to thank I want to thank you for taking on the role of being the student uh, Leadership president, uh, it's a big responsibility. It's something you'll always be able to uh, cherish, and I think don't be shy about putting it right up front in your resume. It makes a big difference, and it's a lot of work and a lot of responsibility, and you have thousands of students that uh, are looking up to you to, for for leadership, and uh, so I want to thank you for taking on that, that role, and uh, uh, your energy uh, is is infectious and I like, <laughs> like being around you. Thank, thank you, you, thank you very much. I also want to um, thank the culinary department for allowing us to have the Fire Bistro uh, today. It's a beautiful place. I come here every now and then uh, for it. Uh, also, Sean Devon in the communications department uh, would also organizing this and helping to, to get it done. And my AS, uh, ASOC student leadership crew uh, from everybody f from Steven, to Nick, to Anthony, Elmarie, Posbo, Susan, and <laughs> uh, everybody else, who'd I, who'd I leave out? I didn't leave out anybody, right? Chris. And then, ah, Chris, right? <laughs> then uh, I want to thank the, Fabiola as well as Aldine, but then also the film crew. I want to thank the film crew uh, for really coming in. I, I think, and I don't know if you noticed, uh, uh, I was back in New York and I, twice now, I was at NYU, and I have a friend that uh, was a professor over there, and now he's like, oh, I heard your film crew is successful over there, because <laughs> NYU has this big film thing, so I, I, I want to say thank you for allowing us to have a like, successful uh, you know, film uh, um, program, because it, it's, yeah, when NYU takes notice, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a big thing. And then everybody else that have made this, uh, this uh, you know, moment with us good, and I hope that it continues, because it's not just for me to sit here now, but whoever comes in to really get that experience to know each other. All right, thank hey. you. Thank you.